Hello everyone and welcome back to another Arlington Neighborhood video. I am your host Matt Layton and in today's video we're taking a look at the Ashton Heights neighborhood. We're going to talk about the community, the houses, the history. What I want to do is touch briefly on the history but focus more on the ambiance inside the community and what the neighborhood is actually like. Sound like a plan? Awesome. Let's get started. Ashton Heights is located in North Arlington and is bounded by Arlington Boulevard on the south, Glebe Road on the west, Wilson Boulevard on the north, and Irving Street on the east. The neighborhood was founded all the way back in 1919 and has just over 1,800 households. Like many neighborhoods in this vicinity of Arlington, Ashton Heights was sparsely populated farmland up until around 1910 when the trolley line that ran through Clarendon was in its heyday. You have to remember that this is before cars. People didn't just choose to live in Arlington and parts west and then commute into DC like they do now. The trolley line was key in setting up Ashton Heights for success. Many homes in Ashton Heights started being built around the early 1920s. As we made our way into the 30s, the development slowed down a little bit in the early 1930s because of the depression, but by 1935, homes in Ashton Heights were once again being built at a swift pace. As we moved through the late 30s and into the 40s is when we started seeing the multifamily apartment buildings being built that we see now on the edges of the neighborhood. Ashton Heights is mostly populated with single family homes, but there are a handful of apartment complexes throughout the neighborhood. Development was slowed significantly from the 1950s to the 1970s, but once the 80s came around, the development was kick-started with the arrival of the Metro. What we see here are houses from different eras that line neighborhood streets. On a typical street, you may see houses from the early 1900s, maybe a Sears catalog house, followed by a few colonials. Colonials certainly make up the majority of the homes in Ashton Heights. Then maybe that's followed by an updated bungalow or craftsman, followed by a new build. And even throughout all these changes and developments that have made their way into Ashton Heights, the neighborhood has retained a lot of its original character. The neighborhood still features an abundance of mature trees that create a tree canopy. Another characteristic of Ashton Heights are narrow streets, many of which do not have sidewalks. Sidewalks, believe it or not, are actually a touchy subject in the neighborhood. Most of the main Main streets that run north-south like Jackson and Lincoln will have sidewalks, but some streets like Norwood, 6th, and 5th Street, just to name a few, will simply not have sidewalks. Two points involving streets. First, streets with names will always have more traffic than those that are numbered. Jackson Street comes to mind because it connects the neighborhood with Route 50, but there are certainly other streets in the neighborhood that carry a lot of through traffic as well. And the second point is that Arlington County has done a good job of implementing traffic calming measures like traffic circles and curb bump outs. Now these curb cuts, sidewalk additions, and speed bumps are not without contention from the neighborhood. Some see it as an improvement that the county is making to make complete streets or what's known as complete streets while others see it as yet another example of Arlington County wasting taxpayer money to fix problems that weren't even problems in the first place. Now the way I see it is that Arlington and Ashton Heights is only going to become more densely populated, right? There's only going to be more people that want to live in the area. That means more cars, more bikers, more put whatever mode of transportation, there's going to be more of it. Now listen to this. You Personally, you don't have to bike to work. Uh, you don't have to walk to work. You can keep driving to work, but just know that your neighbors are biking to work and your neighbors are walking to work. And that means less cars in front of you. That means less damage to roads, less potholes because of less users. And it means one less person who's trying to steal your parking spot. Bottom line is you have an opportunity to make your neighborhood safer. It's literally going to be safer for all users on the road, for all cars, for all bikers, and for all pedestrians. And if you have this opportunity, it's a no-brainer. You go for it. Speaking of alternatives to driving, 5th Street is one of my favorite roads in Ashton Heights because of its bike ability. It runs parallel to Pershing Drive. Have you ever tried biking on Pershing? It is not pleasant to say the least. 5th Street is much less traffic from that point of view and provides a quick access point from one side of Ashton Heights all the way over to the other side. As we start to head to the western portion of Ashton Heights, the neighborhood changes significantly. There's many more businesses and apartment complexes located along Glebe, Piedmont Street, and Pollard Street 
compared with the eastern parts of the neighborhood. There are a few overlapping neighborhoods in the western part of Ashton Heights. Take for example the Kettler Capitals Iceplex where the Capitals practice and soon to be Balsam Quarter. Technically in Ashton Heights but if you go hang out with your friends you're not saying hey let's go watch the Caps play meet me in Ashton Heights. It's like hey we're going to Boston. Or if you're going to go get a delicious falafel at Ravi Kebab, most would refer to that as Buckingham even though Ravi Kebab is technically in Ashen Heights. Although the neighborhood is mostly single-family houses, it does go to show that there's a variety of businesses, structures, and residences throughout the community. And in addition to all of this, there's also some nice parks in Ashen Heights. Some have a little more going for them than others, but we'll start off at Gumball Park. Yes, that's actually the name. This park is pretty straightforward and has just a few benches. Maybe it's large enough to throw a frisbee, but it's more of a sedentary park. Next up is Herschel Milliken Park, which is even smaller than Gumball Park, but it does have a nice, albeit short trail, and some benches in the shade. We now move to Mori Park, which features two tennis courts, a small field, and a play ship for the kids. The park sits adjacent to the Arlington Arts Center. At one point, this building was known as the Clarendon School, and then the Mori School as it served as the elementary school for the neighborhood before being converted into an art center in 1974. We finish up at Mosaic Park. This is more of an urban park located right along North Quincy Street. There's a pretty large field and a nice little jungle gym. All right, with that being said, it's time to take a look at the top three things you need to know about living in Ashton Heights. Number one is walk to Clarendon and Balsam. Ashton Heights is one of the most convenient neighborhoods in all of Arlington. Here's the deal. From Ashton Heights, you can walk to the Balsam Metro. You can walk to the Virginia Square Metro. And you can walk to the Clarendon Metro. And when you walk home, you're walking home to your single, fa your detached house most likely, your yard, and your off street parking, your driveway, there's gonna be parking outside of your house, but just minutes away, you're gonna have all the urban amenities that you're looking for. Not many neighborhoods are gonna be able to check off all these boxes. Yes, your house might be a little bit older. Yes, your yard is not gonna be the size of a football field, but you're not gonna have the location that you would at some of these far out neighborhoods. Simply saying, the location in Ashton Heights is amazing. Number two is sense of community. Ashton Heights has a great community vibe. I feel like this is an underrated quality of a neighborhood that people should add and, and place more value on when they're looking for a neighborhood. The Ashton Heights listserv keeps you updated on all the community events and hyper-local news that is happening in your backyard. It could literally be your backyard. And there's a lot of events that take place. Take one, for example, Halloween. Ashton Heights and especially North Jackson Street is the go-to spot. Here's the game plan and you can steal this plan if you want. This one is free of charge. Start your night at Lion Park. Start it in Lion Park at the Lion, at Lion Park. There's a bonfire there. Apple cider and donuts. From there, work your way over to 4th Street. Used to be a haunted house there. Not sure if it's there anymore. 4th turns into Jackson. Take North Jackson all the way up towards Wilson. You'll pass by another haunted house. It's the go-to spot. You hit there and you're golden. There's a couple other events that you should be aware of and Ashton Heights and Lion Park share in the same community events because they're right next door to one another and the communities are very similar. Notable events include the, uh, thanks, the annual Thanksgiving Turkey Trot, the annual Spring Fair at Lion Park, and of course the ultra competitive Chili Cook-Off. And number three is Balsam Quarter Development. And I want to lump in development in general into this category as well, both commercial as we're seeing along Glebe and Wilson Boulevard, and residential as I'm sure you've seen new homes popping up in the neighborhood recently. And here's the deal, development is penetrating Ashen Heights, and it's a good thing. I think with the new Balsam Quarter coming in in 2018, it's going to help stimulate other commercial developers in the area who were maybe gun shy in the past about building up their commercial real estate uh, with the softer market that we're seeing now. So I think that's going to change. The one downside is that it might, well it might, it will be much harder to get into Ashen, to buy into Ashen Heights in the future. I think in the future homeowners are going to value urban walkable amenities even more than they do now. And but they're still gonna want that house. And let's face it, if you're looking in Arlington, you can pretty much get a new construction house in any neighborhood. You can get a four bed, two bath colonial in any neighborhood, but you can't get that walkability. And the best part is, if the weather sucks, uh, you can just drive. 
like you don't have to sell your car. It's the best of both worlds. I strongly believe that every single house in Ashton Heights is undervalued right now and that the Balsam Quarter redevelopment is gonna be a game changer. Okay, there you have it. Some pretty bold statements, pretty bold predictions in today's videos. There you have it, the top three things you need to know about living in Ashton Heights. Just to recap, number one, walk to Clarendon and Balsam. Number two is sense of community. And number three is Balsam Quarter redevelopment. Guys, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click that red subscribe button right there. If you learn anything, hit the thumbs up button. Thank you so much for watching. It is much appreciated. Until next time, create a productive day. Take care.